Ant and Deck are among my most photographed subjects. They were taken for various magazines at various different locations. The first time I encountered them, they were known as PJ and Duncan. I was photographing them for a teen magazine in a kind of pseudo reportage fashion. So I shot black and white film, available light, and it was kind of like an ode to the great pictures by Harry Benson of the Beatles, but it was PJ and Duncan. I got an insight into what they were like because we were in the studio doing this poster shot. I didn't think this shoot was very important and I guess I was a bit complacent. So I hadn't bothered to find out that really PJ and Duncan were Ant and Deck. And during the shoot, I was sort of calling them PJ or Duncan. I'm not even sure who was PJ and who was Duncan. It was actually quite rude looking back on it, but they were so good natured and so professional and easygoing. And I think they thought it was quite funny that this idiot photographer didn't even know, you know, it would be a bit like photographing Sylvester Stallone and calling him Rambo. Oi Rambo, turn your head to the side. It was kind of a ridiculously rude way to behave during a photo shoot. The fact they were so easygoing, I think is probably one of the reasons that they've been a mainstay on British television and they've been so successful because they're professional, they're relaxed. Obviously, they've had life's ups and downs, but they are exactly as you see on the TV. They are quite funny and smart and sort of savvy. Next, I photographed them for The Observer. They were a cultural phenomenon by now. It was a much more adult photo session. They were no longer PJ and Duncan, and they had morphed into Ant and Deck. When you photograph them, you're told that Ant is always on the left and Deck is always on the right. You always saw them in a recognizable brand and not wanting to tarnish their brand. So they were always perceived visually in the same way. Often comedians that I photographed, quite often they're nothing like the persona that you think they will be. You really kind of want to believe that Larry, da I mean, Larry David probably is like that. But quite often when you photograph comedians, there's a darker side. But with Ant and Deck, there isn't a darker side. That's who they are. Back when I made all these shoots, I was living in London. And on my way into the West End, I would drive through Shoreditch. And I would always pass this mural of Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta from Pulp Fiction. It would have the two actors, instead of holding their guns like they would have done in the Tarantino film, they were holding bananas. And I think it must have seeped into my subconscious because when we were at the studio, Ant suddenly got a bit hungry. And so we gave him a banana to eat. And then Deck wanted a banana. And suddenly they were both holding bananas. So we put a banana in front of each of their faces as though one was smiling and one was frowning. And we sort of messed around. Often the best things happen serendipitously. It was months later and I put the picture in my portfolio and actually it's the only picture of Anton Deck that's in the National Portrait Gallery. With the creative process, very little is original. You're standing on the shoulders of giants. So, you know, Banksy, maybe he was influenced by something else. I mean, he took Pulp Fiction and mashed it up. And then I took his graffiti of Pulp Fiction and then mashed it up a little bit more. By the time I shot them a fifth time for Marie Claire, I was probably getting a bit lazy and I would do this quite often. I had a house in Hackney in East London and I suggested that they come to my house. So again, something spontaneous happened. I built this shed in my backyard for the maker of this video when he was a little boy, Fred, and it didn't occur to me until I had them in my house that actually because they're quite diddy, it would make a good location. So I sort of had them sort of sitting on the step of this Wendy house in my garden. And I love it when things just come together, sort of found objects and spaces that you don't plan, that just work well on the day and something magical happens. On all of these pictures, I got them to not smile. I often say to my subjects, give me absence of thought because quite often, it's funnier if they're not smiling. If it's sort of too knowing and they're in on it, it becomes kind of a bit conceited and contrived, but it, it keeps its weird 
surreal quality if you don't get people smiling, if people are kind of looking slightly uncomfortable and there's a weird tension. And after we'd done the shoot at my house, I lived right on Well Street Common. So I got the boys out onto the common. Just at that moment, all the schools finished and so all the kids were crisscrossing the common. And they, of course, they saw Ant and Deck and they asked if they could watch. And so watching ended up being involved in the shoot. And suddenly I had a huge crowd of kids all surrounding Ant and Deck. And they couldn't have been more relaxed, you know, and the kids were really enjoying it. So I got Ant and Deck to keep really, really still. And I put the camera on a tripod and, I, and the kids were all moving around. So it's quite interesting. So the kids are kind of blurred. The magazine wouldn't run a picture like that now because you wouldn't have the permission of the kids' parents. Months after the shoot, we would get kids knocking on our door, asking if Ant and Deck were in. I think some of the kids saw Ant and Deck after we'd finished go back into my house. And it sort of went round the school that I think Ant was basically related to my wife, even though obviously he wasn't. There are some people I photograph again and again and again. Terence Conran, Jamie Oliver, Nigella, and Ant and Deck. And all those people, maybe with the exception of Terence Conran, who could be difficult, it's a pleasure. Ant and Deck are a pleasure if they commission me tomorrow to shoot them again. It'd be really nice to see them.